We're going to talk about Linux today and Linux distribution. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, we're on Wikipedia here. And I, I like Wikipedia is a great place to go for uh, at least initial information on uh, a new topic that I'm, I'm trying to dig into. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, what is a Linux distribution? It's an operating system uh, in a nutshell. So that is what uh, powers your computer, if you will. Uh, according to this uh, Wikipedia article here, uh, there are more than 600 Linux distributions. Uh, over 300 are in current active development. Uh, so you've got some that are commercially backed, like Fedora, uh, which is Red Hat, OpenSUSE, uh, uh, Ubuntu, uh, and then a number of community-driven distributions, like Debian, Slackware, Gen2, and Arch Linux. Uh, and I won't dive too deep into that yet. Let's keep moving forward. We've got a list of different different Linux distributions, and I would encourage you to check some of this out uh, on Wikipedia and beyond. Uh, on the far right hand side, you can see a real uh, busy diagram, uh, and I'll get to that here in just a minute. That shows a number of the different families and how they're interconnected. So again, there's just there's a lot of information here. What I want you to get out of this also, and I'm just going to page down a little bit, and you can see many different Linux distributions and a short description of each of them. So again, this is a great place to come for initial information when you're trying to dive into a topic that's new. So with that, let's go to the diagram that I mentioned a moment ago, and you can see this is the GNU Linux distribution timeline. So you can see that Linux has been around since uh, at least the early 90s, uh, and many distributions exist today, and we'll just tab through those a little bit so you can see some of the different families. You've got the Debian family, as I had mentioned before, that is one of the one of the most popular uh, and you can see a number of distributions based on that. You've got the Ubuntu family in that and I'm not gonna again I'm not gonna dive too deep into this I just want to show you the information. You know, you've got Slackware <clears throat> which is the SUS, Fedora Red Hat so let's go back to Wikipedia again and I, another item that I really like about Wikipedia is uh, when they do comparisons. So in this particular case, we've got comparisons of a number of the different Linux distributions. So here you can see the creator, producer, when it was released, uh, the base distribution, you know, so what it's based on, and the purpose, probably one of the more useful things, so that when you are looking at a distribution, you know, what, what is it used for? If, if you aren't going to be running servers, you may not want to pick something that is for that purpose. You may want something that's more of a desktop variety or depending on what you're doing with it. So what I do want to show you also, and we'll just take a couple seconds here, uh, is some of the different desktop environments. And what I want you to get out of this, I'm just going to flip through these fairly quickly. There are many of them. So you've got many different options, and you'll see some of these, you know, the, the GNOME, uh, KDE, uh, XFCE, there's a number of them. So what you get on the desktop, if you will, <clears throat> can vary quite a bit depending on, uh, on what distribution package you pick uh, and what you want for the front end. Uh, let's go to uh, the Free Software Foundation for a minute. Let's take a step back and uh, and talk about that for a moment. Uh, and I would encourage you to watch the the short little video that's here. I do have that uh, um, posted on on the website, so you can uh, view that directly, or you can come to the Free Software Foundation and and view it from here. Uh, free software. Uh, it's more than just the price that you pay for software. Now some quote-unquote free software you may actually pay for but the important thing about free software is your freedoms so the things that you can and cannot do with that software so and we'll, we'll dive a little deeper into that in just a minute uh, here's another uh, page on the free software foundation again it gives the user the freedom to share study and modify it uh, and their definition or their uh, 
they call it free software because the user is free. So that is the most important thing. And hopefully as you start learning more in this area, or maybe you're already into the developer world, but uh, as you get more and more comfortable with changing software and becoming part of that community, you'll, un I think, understand a little bit more why that's very important. So let's go into the GNU uh, Linux uh, project for a minute. And that is part of the Free Software Foundation. Uh, uh, but let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the different freedoms. I mean, I touched on them a moment ago, but I think it's important to just talk about them in a little more depth here for a minute. Uh, you've got those listed kind of in the middle here. Uh, and it's the Freedom Zero is a freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose. Uh, freedom One is a freedom to study how the program works. Uh, and adapt it to your needs uh, and accessing the source code. So that, that really is the open source uh, software uh, movement in a nutshell. That's, that's you know, one of the bigger uh, items that, uh, that has spurred that community. Uh, the next one is the, the freedom to redistribute copies so you can help your neighbor. So that's freedom number two. And then the final one, freedom number three, is a freedom to improve the program uh, and bring those back into the community so everyone can benefit from the things that you change. So I think what we're seeing is more and more interest uh, on a global basis in free software uh, and, and being part of that community, if you will. All right, now on another element here that the Free Software Foundation has, and I would again encourage you to uh, check some of this out, there are full categories here of various free software. So you've got copying, compressing, uh, editing, education, so on, etc. I won't read those to you, but there's, uh, e you know, each of those brings you to, um, you know, a, a landing page, if you will, that has a number of uh, free software, you know, links to free software within that category. So, all right, let's go to, and, and this isn't directly part of the free software movement, but one of the, the bigger distributions. I'm going to talk about a couple of them. Uh, let's first start, start with Ubuntu, and then we'll go into Linux Mint here in a minute. Uh, Ubuntu is one of the largest uh, distributions uh, for l Linux. And you can see some of the different flavors here. And uh, just a little description of each of them. So I would encourage you to check that out. And some of it depends on what you're going to be doing with that, you know, like the, uh, the educational version. Uh, and some of them depend on the, uh, the machine that you're putting it on. So if you've got an older machine or one that is not as capable, you may choose an appropriate uh, version that is a little bit faster and more lightweight and, and able to be used on that particular uh, uh, computer. Documentation is very, very important. And I want to just take a step back from this for a minute because what you'll see here is, uh, you know, you've got a number of different releases and you see there's an, a long-term support version that comes out basically every two years. You've got a uh, 1404, 1204, and 1004. So uh, the month and year uh, that that particular version came out. And you can see basically every two years they're coming out with a long-term support version. Uh, and each, uh, you know, each community or each uh, flavor of, of Linux is a little bit different in, in what that timeline is, if you will. Uh, and then there are different stable, sub stable versions that come out. Uh, and then you will have more the, uh, uh, the bleeding edge, if you will, the stuff that's coming out for the developers. So it all depends on where you are at in that uh, realm. When you're starting out, typically you want a long-term support version, one that's very stable. Uh, that all, one of the benefits of that is that it also comes with more documentation. And when you go to the uh, different user forms, you will find more information because others have typically come across the problems that you are having and hopefully solve them. So, all right, another useful thing, and I kind of touched on this a little bit, but the, uh, the forums. And I'm, I'm not going to delve too deep into this yet. I've got some other information here in a minute. The important thing I want you to see here is uh, in this Ubuntu uh, forum, we've got 179,000 threads. So different discussions that have occurred, and you can search through those and in many cases find the answer for what you're looking for. Let's switch gears here a little bit and go to uh, the Linux Mint.
and you can see there are different editions here. Uh, the, the Mate, the KDE, XFCE, and I won't dive too deep into those. I will here in a minute, but you can see the community for Linux Mint. You've got 124,000 website users, uh, and you can see the users by edition. There are a number of different editions, if you will, uh, and that is basically the uh, you know what you see on your screen. Some of the stuff, uh, the the software running in the background, if you will, is is pretty much the same between those different distributions. Now, documentation again. I would encourage you to to use the documentation. And here you can see uh, this particular case. Uh, you've got the Cinnamon edition in many different languages. You've got the Mate edition, and so on. Uh, and depending on which version you are planning to download and run on your machine, uh, check out that documentation. Very useful. You know, a huge community behind some of the bigger distributions like this. Uh, and here, uh, also, the, the Linux uh, Mint community, you've got, uh, uh, you know, many different questions that have been asked and answered. And I'll just hit on one of the different items here. Well, first, you've got the rules uh, and releases and announcements, and those uh, have a lot of good information. But then you've got you know, things like newbie questions. And you can see there are over 41,000 topics there, 226,000 posts. So uh, when you just get started, there's a lot of help and support with that process. Let's go to another huge uh, resource, and that is uh, the Stack Exchange. Uh, and you can see on the Stack Exchange, there are there are many different forums. Uh, you've got Stack Overflow, which covers software in many different uh, aspects. Then you've got uh, you've got one on Ubuntu, uh, and you've got a number of others. One on mathematics, if you're interested, and you can see uh, a number of others. And they're not all in the programming and computer realm. Um, board and card games, uh, music. You know, all kinds of different discussions, gardening and landscaping. So there are many different discussion forums that you can participate in. And here's what one of them looks like, the Stack Overflow. Uh, the big things, uh, again, to know here, oh, let me go back to uh, the Stack Exchange for just a minute and click on that. So you can see the magnitude of some of these, like Stack Overflow, there are over uh, eight almost 9 million questions, 15 million answers, uh, and almost 4 million users on that particular exchange. So there are, you know, there's a lot of information and support. So, and I just want to give you an idea of what it looks like. There's a two-minute tour, and I'll get to that here in a second. For that tour, now, the way these work, it's it's not a place to just kind of hang out and, and have small talk. It's more about uh, asking a specific question in enough detail that someone can answer it. So, and, and hopefully that benefits you in the long run, that when you're looking for, you know, when you have a problem and you're looking for an answer, you can find it quickly in most cases. So... Um, just going to scroll through this quickly, but I would encourage you to uh, spend a little time understanding how these work. Uh, data tags is another significant area. So when you're looking for a uh, you know an answer in a specific topic, often data tags are used. So and you can see some of the examples here: Java, JavaScript, uh, PHP, HTML, different uh, software. So if you have a question. Uh, and it's in one of these categories, you can use the data tags to kind of hone your search, if you will. So, and that's not all of them. There are many more, and I can just scroll down a little bit so you get an idea. And obviously, uh, the further down you get, they have a fewer, you know, uh, or they're, they're, the community's not as large. Some of the ones at the top are some of the larger ones. So, with that, have a great day.